Hello, my name is Dr. Cheryl Gooden, pediatric anesthesiologist and associate professor of anesthesiology and pediatrics at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York. Reportedly, difficult intubation in the adult patient population occurs at a rate between 1.5 and 13 percent. The incidence of difficult intubation in pediatrics is unknown, but suspected to be much less when compared to adults. However, as one can imagine, in pediatric patients presenting with craniofacial anomalies, the incidence of difficult intubation occurs much more frequently. So how do we define the difficult airway? It is an airway which is problematic to establish or maintain oxygenation and ventilation with a mask, an endotracheal tube, or both. Causes of a difficult airway include developmental malformations, inflammatory lesions, endocrine and metabolic disorders, infections, trauma, or structural problems. Let's highlight some clinical manifestations of the airway and a few of the more commonly observed syndromes. In Pierre Robin syndrome, the classic triad of airway anomalies include micronathia, glossoptosis, and cleft soft palate. In Golden Haar syndrome, also known as hemifacial microsomia, anomalies include unilateral or asymmetric hypoplasia of the facial bones and muscle. As a result, any of the following airway anomalies may be observed. Small mouth opening, micronathia, deviation of the mandible to the affected side, cleft palate, and a high arch palate. In Down syndrome, also known as trisomy 21, the most important airway considerations may include macroglossia and pharyngeal muscle hypotonia, narrowed nasopharynx, high arch palate, micronathia, a short, broad neck, and small trachea. Keeping these airway features in mind, the endotracheal tube selected should be smaller than might otherwise be predicted. Careful laryngoscopy is required to minimize flexion or extension of the neck secondary to the possibility of atlanto-occipital or atlanto instability. Finally, in Treacher-Collins syndrome, the most important airway considerations include small mouth opening, high arch palate, cleft lip or palate, severe mandibular hypoplasia, and narrow airway due to pharyngeal hyperplasia. With most of these syndromes, the difficulty with laryngoscopy improves as the pediatric patient gets older. However, it is quite the opposite when managing the airway of a patient with Treacher-Collins syndrome. In all these cases, the approach to the difficult pediatric airway begins with the evaluation and consists of a comprehensive history and physical examination. And the assessment should include an exam of the head and neck, oral aperture, tongue size, and mandibular space. And of course, in the pediatric patient, this is sometimes easier said than done. In addition, there is the planning and preparation phase, specifically looking at strategies for managing the difficult airway. And just as important is looking at strategies for extubation of the difficult airway. Use of a GlideScope video laryngoscope offers many advantages in situations involving a difficult airway. It provides an unobstructed view of the glottis. Patient preparation and intubation time may be less compared to other devices, and the time required to learn to use the device proficiently is relatively short. Finally, it is an excellent teaching tool and allows you to review cases at a later time.